this covers everything from coming up with an idea and preparing it and all the way to presenting it to judges at competitions or anywhere you might present a presentation. So first off, um, we are FTC, FTC team 15534 and we are third year FTC team from New Hampshire in the USA. And I'm Isabella, I use the pronoun she, her. Um, I'm Feline, I use the pronoun she, they. And I'm Tanya, I use the pronoun she, her. So we wanted to start off today with a few questions and a small game just for us to get to know each other and have some fun. So we're going to play the game called Kahoot, which is sort of a trivia game. And to join, you just need to visit the website called kahoot.it. Or if you have the app, you can join that. And once you are there, it's that is K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T, you can put in the pin, which is loading up. Give a yeah, so the pin is 8098808. Mm -hmm. If you have any troubles getting on to it, feel free to just send a message in the chat and we'll help you out. All right, I think we'll get started now. So that was the first question. Most of them are going to be about presentations. But yeah, Vertex team, 15534 is a third year robo FTC robotics team, first tech challenge, and we love presenting and helping others. So moving on to the next question. And here's a scoreboard. And these questions are timed. So you have a few seconds to just click on whichever colors um, match with the answer here. So next question. So the most common fear, most people think it might be darkness or spiders, but it's actually public speaking, also known as glossophobia. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how to overcome this fear today and just get into some more details about that. So it looks like purple sea lion is moving up the leaderboard. It's the red one here, body language, because even though all of the above seems to encompass the blue, um, I mean the red, we don't want to speak quickly to fit in all of our ideas because we just want the audience to understand what we want to say. So that might mean that we have to cut down on the ideas, but what's really important is that the audience can understand what you're trying to say. And then the yellow one, we don't want to make it very boring for the audience. So that's why red is the answer here. So moving on. Next question, true or false? Yeah, 
yeah, so it's good to have a fun theme just for the audience to stay engaged and interested in your presentation. So it's not just about the words. So moving on, next question. Awesome. So yeah, this is something that we didn't expect you to know before coming here since that's what we're going to be talking about a little more in detail later on today. But yeah, so the 555 rule means three things. No more than five words per line, no more than five lines per slide, and then also no more than five slides that have a lot of text on them in a row. So looking pretty good. Next question. Great. Definitely don't want to stare at just one person. Okay. Yeah, so this one is good to have an interactive presentation is true because you want to, again, keep the audience engaged and interested in your presentation. So moving on to the next one. So this one is a little tricky. We had the question say, which is not a filler word. So that might have stumbled a few people up and you shouldn't always say like, or uh, or you know, in your presentation. So that's something you can work on over time. So next question. How should we prepare? <laughs> So yeah, this one is one that we're going to be talking a little bit more about later today. And speaking extemporaneously, it's a big word, but that just means without preparation. And the blue one, read through your notes just once. You should definitely look over your presentation, know it top to bottom, all the way through. And yeah, so you should definitely practice your presentation. Great. Moving on. Awesome. Yeah, so it looks like you guys did very well on this question and we that shows that reading off your slides is not something you should do. So, and we'll talk more about this again later on. Looks like Rational Wombat is leading right now. Moving on to the next question. Yeah, so again, practicing, we cannot emphasize this enough. It's always a great thing to do for a presentation. And also showing, not telling will help you remember what you're supposed to talk about, but at the same time, keep you from reading off words because there aren't many words. And then looking at the audience, maintaining eye contact, we're going to 
talk more about that again later, but that's super important when giving a presentation. Awesome, okay. Have a little switcheroo there, fifth place. Great, so true is the correct answer. Moving on. Wow, that was a very great answer to that question. And yes, it's all three of them. So bringing new team members or just all of your team members helps get new ideas to the table and just spread around interesting ideas. And then the next one is valuable things because everyone has awesome things to say and you should always listen to what everyone has to say. And the last one is reinforces the idea of inclusivity. And this is super important if you want to build a great team, not just for presentations, but overall to have a better team and build better robots and anything else that you need to achieve. Great. Yeah, and if you have any questions, you can also unmute yourself later on, but just type them into the chat and we'll get to them. So nearing the end of the quiz here. Answer is all of them. And we'll get to this again more in the following few minutes after this little game here. But to help everyone find their voice and use their voice, you need to be sure to listen to them, make them feel like they have something valuable to say because they do. Prepare presentations in advance so that way you can divide anything you need to say. Get to know your teammates, that's always an important thing if you want to have a solid team. And lastly, don't shut others and their ideas down. Okay, great. 15th question. Yeah, so this question, again, is slightly tricky because we are asking for which are not examples of good body language. And body language is something really hard to see over Zoom, but it's something just as important anytime you're presenting. So we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Moving on to the next question. Awesome, everybody got this one right and everybody got all of them. Yeah, so these are all examples of great body language um, contrary to the ones that were in the last question. Okay, we're very close to the end here. Last two questions. Yeah, great. So the day before a presentation or the day on of the presentation are the most important hours if you want to have a great presentation. So you need to get a good night's sleep so you're not tired and so you can think straight. You should make sure everything works, especially on a Zoom call. This is very, very important. You need to test any sound that you might have playing, all of your slides, your transitions with your friends. And you should also relax because you know that you will, I mean, you, yeah, you know that you will crush your presentation after all of your hard work and your preparation. 
So you should definitely relax. But at the same time, don't go all the way to the other end. Do not party for that whole time. So yeah, OK. Our last question here. Great, yeah. So we have finished with this. Let's see how the leaderboard is like. Let's look at the podium. So yeah, that's it for our game today. Um, I hope that was fun and a great way to start off our rest of our presentation today. So congrats to all of our winners and anyone that did this present, this game, so. Okay, moving on to the rest of our presentation. Just to go into a little more detail about what the questions were about. And we have one more question for you which we're going to, this is a question we'll be answering throughout the whole presentation. And it is, what even is a winning presentation? We say that a lot, but what even is it? So, and how do we even turn a boring or even just a normal presentation into one that will make the judges or anyone listening to your presentation say, wow. And there are a lot of factors to a winning presentation. So it can be engaging, informative, concise, meaning, it's short and still gets the point across, organized and fun. So notice that a winning presentation doesn't necessarily mean that you win all of the awards possible at a competition. It's really just about these five bullet points that we have above. And it's really about how fun it is for you and how great it is for the audience. So think about the audience and not just about any awards that you might want to win. So one of the most important parts of making sure that you have a good presentation is planning and preparing. Um, so this is an, a very interesting quote about um, pre preparing for your presentation. If you don't know what you want to achieve in your presentation, your audience never will. So it's really important to brainstorm and uh, truly understand what you're trying to present first before you start preparing. So what are the main things that you should plan for? You should just you should start by deciding what you want to present or, or or more specifically what information you want to convey to your audience, how you want to convey that to your audience, and how you want to divide up your roles and lines to make sure everyone has an equal voice in the presentation. So to decide how to what to present, you should divide your information into major categories or groups so that way you can organize your presentation um, and you should as Isabella said before stay concise which means straight to the point and um, you say your point in in a very um, condensed manner so that um, you don't have too much irrelevant information in your presentation Um, and you also need to decide how you want to communicate your information to your audience. Um, we're going to talk more about presenting methods later, but just for planning, um, you need to know that the audience will either read or listen to your slides. So you don't want to have too much text on your slides because otherwise the audience won't listen to you. Um, you have to know like who your audience is going to be and what the context of your presentation is going to be in and adjust accordingly. And as we mentioned in the Hoot, there's a 555 guideline, which, which is to say that you should have at most five words per line, five lines per slide, and five text heavy slides in a row. This is a guideline, so it's not a strict rule, but it's something to keep in mind so that you keep everything fairly concise. Um, you also need to think of ways to keep your audience engaged and interested. It, 
So for example, um, we ran the Kahoot in the beginning to keep everyone engaged and learning about what we're gonna pre be presenting about. And you also need to um, know where you will be presenting. So if, if it's in a virtual context or if it's in a conference room or something like that. And one of the most important parts of preparing is deciding how you're gonna divide up the presentation and making sure that everyone has an equal voice. You should try to try your best to get a good sense of who's comfortable explaining what and um, making sure that everyone says about an equal amount of things so that everyone feels included. And next, Sonia's just gonna talk about, or no, Isabella's gonna talk about practice. Yeah, so practice, as I said in the Kahoot, is one of the most important parts of a presentation, and it's going to take up the most amount of time after you have already prepared your slides or anything. Just to prepare, you need to practice, and practice makes progress. So never be perfect, but it will make it better and better. So one quote that we found very interesting is about presentations is that it takes one hour of preparation for each minute of presentation time. And this is by Wayne Burgraff. And this is very true. Even if it might be slightly exaggerated in a real context, you really need a lot of time for every single second you spend talking either in a real concrete context or over Zoom virtually. So why do we need to prepare? You need to know your presentation from top to bottom. There will always be something that comes up in your presentation Maybe you have some technical difficulties or just something small. You might get distracted during your presentation. That happens to even the best of us. And you should know every single part. And you might have bullet points and note cards, but also you should internalize. Don't memorize anything. Maybe you can memorize your main points, but you should know what you're supposed to talk about. So you don't have to read and you should really understand the concepts you're presenting. And so you should also know your audience. So you can practice in front of anyone, practice in front of a mirror so you can see your facial expressions, your gestures, everything like that. Practice with family, teammates, friends, and they will help you see and give you feedback and they will give you constructive criticism. And lastly, you can record yourself. You will be able to hear everything that you're saying that will give you time to realize oh, maybe I'm having a little trouble at the beginning of my presentation. I should be working a little bit on here at minute five at the very end. And that's not something you can always hear from a family, especially um, your parents who tend to give you not as much constructive criticism because they want you to feel good, which is also important. But make sure to also receive very, um, you should also have constructive criticism and that will really come from yourself. Okay, and lastly, for preparation, you need to prepare your timing. So plan it out in advance so you can figure out, okay, who's talking first, how long is each one, each one part, and you should slow down. So, but also you can vary that pace with purpose. If I start talking faster, it can sound more excited or it can convey the emotion that you want to feel. And over the whole presentation, make sure you breathe. Spend your time, stay relaxed. It's hard, everyone knows, but it will come with practice. So make sure you breathe and stay calm. And lastly, visualize your success before your presentation. Visualizing it will help you realize that you can do it. And if you can visualize it in advance, you'll know, um, you'll feel more confident overall and you will do great. Okay, so now you've prepared an amazing presentation. You've also practiced what you're gonna say, but there's still a lot you have to do. Other than just practicing the words, you have to add a crucial finishing touch. You have to practice your body language as well as how you say what you're saying. Um, you may not know it, but 7% of communication is simply what you're saying, the actual content, but that's only 7%. The other 38% is what you hear, your tone of voice, how you say it, and how expressive you are. And 55% of the message is actually conveyed through your body language, which we'll get into later. One quote that we chose for this section was, well-timed silence hath more eloquence than speech. So we'll get into why silence is important later on. 
Okay, so for body language, 55% of your communication. As was previously mentioned, it's hard to communicate body language over Zoom, but if you were in an in-person situation, it's hard to take note of your posture. Stay engaged, stand straight, and keep your hands out where people can see you. Um, move with purpose. So while you don't want to be constantly swaying back and forth or pacing because that implies nervousness, you do want to still use your space and to engage with your audience. So that can involve walking forwards when you're speaking or going from side to side, but not pacing. So you have to find that balance. And with eye contact, you also have to find a balance. You don't want to stare at one person throughout the whole presentation, as we mentioned the Kahoot, but it is good to look at individual people and just shift your gaze once in a while. Three seconds is a great sweet spot for that. Um, also, hand gestures. You don't want to have crossed arms, hands in pockets. Instead, if palms open implies that you're very open to interacting with your audience or like raising your hands, lowering your hands, your hands can convey a lot. Um, facial expressions can also convey a lot. So you always want to be very expressive and engaged. Lastly, dressing for the occasion. If it's something formal, you should wear something formal. And if it's casual, then you should wear something casual. Another very important part, you may remember 38% is determined by your voice. Your voice as a speaker is very important. You should always drink water before you are speaking, like Isabella is drinking water right now. So take care of your voice. Um, you wanna keep in mind your projection and articulation when speaking, because especially it's like in Zoom, you should probably just make sure that people can hear you and that your microphone is working. But in person, it's very important that even the people in the back of the room can hear you. So you should get to know where you're presenting and maybe practice how to articulate so someone that far away can actually hear you. When you're speaking, you should also avoid filler words, as we mentioned the Kahoot, words like like, um, they imply that you don't really know what you're talking about. Something else that you should vary is tone. When you're high pitched, it means you're more excited and lower pitches are for more serious tones. So throughout the whole presentation, you should vary your tone on, in different parts to keep the audience interested. More on your voice. Your pace should also be varied, and this is also in one of the practice slides. You should pace out when you're speaking faster versus when you're speaking slower, and that can help draw attention to certain parts of the presentation. Your volume is also something that you have control over. You can speak loudly or quietly, and that can have different effects, and you should think about what you want to convey and how you want to convey it. And back to the quote that we mentioned at the beginning of this section, silence. Silence is a very important tool. It can often be more useful than speaking. I don't know if you guys have listened to any of President Obama's speeches from four years ago when he was president, but he is known for effectively using emphatic pauses because silences draw your attention. It's not necessarily good to cram in a lot of words and try to say everything and talk over other people and interrupt people. Like that does not convey your point effectively. And the last thing you wanna keep in mind is breathing. Don't forget to breathe. That helps with a lot of things like pace and articulation. And you should always take low breaths when speaking because that helps you project your voice farther. So that was just some of the stuff about how to prepare your presentation, how to practice, and how to effectively practice to communicate to the best of your ability. So do you have any questions after that on any specific parts of preparing your presentation or anything else? Um, as this was a fantastic presentation and, and uh, uh, of course, you, you, we've set the, the bar high for you because um, uh, doing a presentation on how to do a good presentation you have to do a good presentation and you just knocked it out of the park. So well done uh, on that. Um, I just had one a quick question. I, I know that, uh, that uh, you touched on it in a, a couple of slides with uh, some of the tips, but um, is there anything uh, that is, would be specific to um, 
uh, virtual presentations like this that uh, that you can give a, a tip to the audience where uh, this season we may be doing a, a lot more of the uh, of virtual presentations and things like that is there any uh, do you have any tips that uh, that would help in um, in preparing for these types of presentations yeah so first off you have to stay extremely organized since you have a lot of people and technical difficulties might come up so definitely practice that and because you can't see your whole body and you can't really move around as much in a zoom um any zoom presentations overall you have to really use your voice and your facial expressions and you might not see your hands all the time but sometimes you can definitely bring them up into the camera and be very aware of what your hands are doing and overall, your facial expressions are really the way to go. And your voice, and as Tanya was saying early on, well, not early on, but um, earlier in the presentation, you need to vary your pitch, your timing, and that's really one of the main ways that you have to keep your audience engaged. I think that's a, that's a very good point about, uh, about your voice because uh, obviously uh, when you've got uh, folks that are listening to you online, then it's... Uh, uh, I think it's it's a little harder to keep people engaged and interested in in what's going on. Uh, whereas if you're there in person, then uh, um, you know there 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 might be other things that uh, that would would help keep uh, your audience engaged. But uh, um, on the other hand, uh, you know I, I can see that that you've got uh, everybody's uh, uh, attention um, on the screen. Um, uh, that you've you've basically got a, a captive audience. Uh, um, how would you capitalize on that? Um, so one of the great things about an online presentation is that it's very easy to do online activities like a Kahoot or other virtual things like that. So we, even though you have everyone um, as you said, like captive on Zoom, it's really, really easy for people to maybe just swipe with three fingers, like very, very easy for somebody to go look at something else. Or even just if they're on your presentation, people need to take a break from the screen. So you might find a lot of people looking around or it's hard to focus just in general. So you really need to keep engagement up. And it's, my, it's not always possible to do a game like that, but make sure to ask the audience questions and really feel um, like you're connecting with the audience. You're talking with the audience, it's a conversation. And even though you're presenting to them, you need to make the audience feel like they're heard because they really are. And it's hard on Zoom because you can't always see the people that you're talking to, but you have to still imagine because you know that you're li they're listening to you. And as a presenter, you really need to build that connection over zoom a yeah, good point and i think you 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 really did a good job in in uh, starting out with the kahoot and that certainly did you know uh, engage your audience get them interested uh we learned a few things uh in the quiz before you even started the presentation so i think that was an excellent use of uh, of those sorts of tools so it's uh, uh i you know i think that's one of the uh the giveaways for me, I mean, takeaways for me is that uh, uh, using those sorts of tools at your disposal um, in, a, in a format like this is, uh, is very helpful and, um, and can really um, uh, make a difference with, a, with an online presentation, whereas it would be difficult, if not impossible, to do that in, in an in in-person presentation as well. So uh, well done with that. Well, let me ask uh, our presenters, and is, is there any one tip that would be um, uh, the, sort of the, um, the golden rule uh, when it comes to putting a presentation together that you would, uh, that you would say that is, uh, you know, the, the one thing that you, you really think that uh, a presenter should consider? So, um, in my personal opinion, I think that one of the most important Part of putting a presentation together is making sure that your thoughts are organized. So um, I think that be like, organizing all of the information you want to convey into concise statements and categories really helps when you put everything together. 
And Great. I'll just add on another thing, um, especially, for example, Zoom or Google Meets or anything else that's virtual, you have this small box, right? And that box is all yours. It's your real estate. So you should really use it to your advantage. You have that space for your facial expressions, as I said earlier, your hand gestures, if you choose to use them, which is slightly harder over Zoom. But um, in that box is also your voice. So that's something that you really have to elevate. It's something that you should really focus on in your practicing. So overall, just this little box, that's what you have. And you should really focus on that in your presentation. Great, great tips. So we do have one question uh, from Chloe. It says, would, uh, would putting slide numbers on your slides make any difference? Um, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was just saying we did put slide numbers, but that's definitely not necessary for an online presentation, especially since everything is in order, like in Google Slides. So I'd say the only time you really need those is if you were to print everything out and you want to still keep them organized, but it's definitely optional. And I also would say that slide numbers help you stay organized. So it also gives the audience a sense of where we are in the presentation. So it's by all means not necessary at all. And it's we just had a little extra time, so we decided to put them there because it helps you stay on a track because you know that you're starting at one, right? So if you're at side maybe 10, you, as a presenter, you also know where you are approximately and the audience know that, well, the audience might not know as well because they don't know where it ends, but it just overall gives a more concrete outline. Great. Oh, fantastic. Well, we have come to the end of our session. So I, um, I, I thank everybody who's attended. I hope you've learned something. I certainly have learned something today, learned lots of things from uh, this wonderful team. And I, I wanted to, to thank uh, our presenters for a fantastic presentation. Uh, you really did a, an excellent job. And uh, uh, as I say, I've learned a lot. And so I, I'm sure uh, everybody that has tuned in has learned a lot. Yeah.